Welcome to the Learning Reinvented podcast brought to you by myself, James Politilo, and the team at The Learning Effect. There are lots of learning podcasts out there, so we wanted to do something slightly different. This week, I'm speaking to my fellow podcast host, Katie Godden, and finding out a little bit more about her and her learning journey. Katie, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much, James. So we wanted to do, as we said, something a little bit different and find out more about what drives us. So this episode and next one are going to be about us talking about what learning means to us and what's important to us and the things that have driven our learning careers. So let's kick off that question to you. So, Katie, what does learning mean to you? I think learning to me is about finding stuff out because you've got a purpose to. So whether that's um trying to fix something whether you need to know some more information to further your development in something um but always having that purpose behind it um like when i was at school and just learning stuff because it was in a syllabus and i was told that i needed to learn it i didn't really get that far with it and i didn't really enjoy it um and it never really stuck for me however when i was genuinely interested in something and there was a purpose behind it so um, I really like sports, for example. So when I was like learning new skills in sports, um, I could see the purpose because it would benefit me then when I was playing against other teams, et cetera. Um, so that for me is is kind of like learning. It's, it has to have that purpose behind it um, because otherwise for me personally, it just doesn't go in and doesn't stick. And I think that's that's an interesting point you make about that purpose because, you know, you get people who say we love love learning and love finding out things and I think most people do but it's those things that are interesting to them or relevant to them or have meaning to them I think forced learning so regardless of how good a learner you are if you're then forced to learn about something that isn't really to your interest I think most people would find that quite demoralizing or de-energizing so you know I completely get where you're coming from on on that purpose so you know going back to school and how that set your almost view of, of what learning might be. How's that progressed through your life and your career? Um, well, I wasn't particularly academic, like I really enjoyed school, but like I said previously, I really enjoyed sports. Um, and that was something that came uh, naturally to me. I liked being outside, I liked running around. Um, I really liked the strategic side of sports. Um, I liked winning, um, but it, sitting down in a classroom for me wasn't, kind of the be all and end all and I, I didn't particularly enjoy that. Um, there were certain subjects that, that I did enjoy but I never really had that ambition or, or want to kind of go on to go to university so I didn't. Um, I, I kind of I tried to do some A-levels and I was doing well at them but it wasn't something that I wanted to do. What, what I wanted to do was go out and kind of make some money um, and that, that's where I started. I started off at the very bottom in an office as an office junior and I, I kind of learned learned the skills that I needed to then progress. And um, so I learned the basics. I remember kind of sticking stamps on envelopes with a ruler and, and uh, filing things, ordering stationery and doing all of those kind of like mundane jobs. Um, but then then progressed that. So started learning things about systems. And and that's where I really started to understand um, that my like and enjoyment of actually using systems and actually learning new systems. Um, and that's something I hadn't realised at school because when it came to IT and things like that, I hadn't really been that interested in it, if I'm being completely honest. Whereas when I was in my first job, um, we we supplied e-learning um, tools, so assessments and, and content, etc. Um, and we had bespoke systems and that's where I started to realise I did I did enjoy learning the systems, I enjoyed figuring them out, I enjoyed testing them, etc. And that's where I kind of progressed my career into kind of the corporate learning side, going into retail, etc. Um, but but always wanting to learn more to kind of better myself at that job. And it, I think it kind of goes back to what I was doing at school as well in sports. Like I, I was learning in sports that I wanted to progress because I wanted to do better when I was out playing against other teams. And I guess that I've I've kind of taken that into into my career as well that I want to progress I want to go up that ladder but I guess I didn't do it in the way that lots of people do whereas you go to university you, you do a degree and then you go into the workplace I went a little bit different to that. 
I mean, I th you know, I think you make an important point that there's no, you know, set route that everyone must follow to success or, you know, whatever their next step is, you know, success is relative to everyone and, and everyone sets their own bar on what success might be. But what I do think is interesting in learning and anything that we do is is understanding that, you know, if you don't know something or or don't understand something, maybe the curiosity to ask the question and sort of in the spirit of that, I'm just going to go back to in your answer where you said sticking stamps on with a ruler. Yeah. What on yeah. earth is sticking stamps on with a ruler? <laughs> so when I first started my job, that was one of my jobs was to stick the stamps on the letters because this was back in the day, like, I don't know, 12, 13 years ago when you sent out more more posts. So um, my my team leader at the time said that I wasn't sticking the stamps on straight enough. So I had to use a ruler to stick the stamps on with. And as much as it's hilarious now, it really frustrated me at the time because I was like, I'm sure the postman doesn't care. As long as they're somewhere in the top right hand corner, I'm sure that that's all they're bothered about. Not whether they're perfectly straight, but, but they were kind of the mundane jobs that I was doing at the time. And, and obviously, there isn't really much learning in that because it was just me learning to stick them on more straight um, and then potentially without a ruler, I guess. But but yeah, that, that was that story behind that. <laughs> but I think that highlights an interesting point that, you know, some of those memories, even from that first job and maybe where there's been that contention or a bit of frustration with the process or something like that, or you thinking there's a different or a better way of approaching things or or not necessarily buying into the systems or rules that are there and you know that probably sort of shapes how you approach problem solving and you know it's a bit of an indicator as to how you now you know approach your job approach your role approach how you help clients at the moment yeah and I think like you kind of touched on it there about the problem solving bit like I and the curiosity side like if I don't know something and I'm perhaps having a conversation with someone or I need to know something whether we're kind of dealing with other clients and it, it's an industry um, or an aspect of work that I'm not 100% sure of, um, that's where I've got that curiosity and want to actually go on and research things anyway and find that out. And especially like if I'm just talking to someone and I know that I'm right and I've got to prove them wrong with something, I'm like, no, look, I've got to go and Google it. Um, or, or again, if I'm not right, go and learn more about it as well. You know what I mean? But I have got that want, but it does come back to not necessarily within work because sometimes we have to learn about things that aren't necessarily of interest to us but it helps us then progress at our jobs but especially in my personal life if I've got a, a real interest in it I will go and sit and read stuff about it and to have as much data I think thinking back onto it as well like when Covid kicked off last year um, and we didn't really know anything about it I remember like just reading the news continuously throughout the first couple of weeks just to find out more data so then when I was talking to people and having those conversations when we're all locked in our houses I could go actually this is this this is that and if we use the data but obviously I don't think we've ever got to that point of actually having good comprehensive data in that aspect but but again that was something because it was something I was aware of it was going on and it was of interest to me because it was keeping us all confined in our houses I guess so and I think yeah that's an interesting point because you know sometimes we learn things that are set or you know you learn the theory of this or you learn when this happened in history and there's sort of a agreed outcome on that there is an answer you know you learn how to do something in the system and there's a set way of doing it but with something like Covid you know it's that ever-changing environment and that thing where things aren't settled where there isn't a one page that you can go and read that on and you actually have to take a more inquisitive approach to your learning and I think that triggers very different approaches from different people. Yeah definitely and I think and like, like and especially with that and with the Covid stuff you had people that just didn't want to read anything at all and were just kind of going with it but but for me and, and the way that I think I like to have as much information as possible on something um, if it's of use to me you know what I mean and if it's something that I'm doing I don't know work about or anything like that it's best to have the most amount of um, the most information I can get my hands on um, to then actually go with the facts as opposed to kind of half assed doing things I guess. <laughs> So thinking sort of at learning experiences holistically, what's been the best learning experience that you've taken part in? 
Uh, there's, there's been so many when you think about like learning you're kind of learning every day aren't you with different aspects but but I think one of our our big ones was kind of setting up a business and not only was that like, a huge risk and uh, um, a bit of a nervous time kind of quitting a kind of normal job and then and then going self-employed in your own company the, it comes with lots of learnings as well you have to learn things like how a company runs, how you get set up on company's house. But one of my big ones, because I kind of mainly look after it, is the, the account side of things and learning kind of QuickBooks and how we invoice people and how we get money, how we pay our taxes and making sure we're kind of doing those on time. And some of those things, that's a continuous thing as well, because some of those things I'm still kind of learning bits on and, and understanding various bits. And by no means am I an expert or an accountant, but um it's something that i think in my career previous to setting up a company i've never really had to take part in because payroll dealt with that um <laughs> i didn't have to do anything but but yeah that has been a good experience and it is probably one of the best ones because it's a positive thing and, and it's doing it for us and our company if that makes sense um so yeah i think that's probably the best best learning experience so it's been a good learning experience but you know if you dissect that and think that through has that been a smooth experience a straightforward experience you know what, what's what's that journey been like of sort of going from working you know in the safety supposedly of, of a organization to the the risk you know particularly through covid and everything else of, of running a business and, and having to step into a load of areas that are relatively new or untested for for us or and certainly for you uh it's nerve-wracking i think to say the least um and like you get some real highs and you get some real lows i guess because it like when we get new customers i think like we're so excited about that and like you i see memes and things like that on instagram and facebook and things of where people have got their own small companies and um, they, they're talking about kind of shopping local and things like that and they're normally kind of craft stores and things um, and you can see the excitement that they get from someone purchasing a product from them um, as opposed to that person going and shopping in kind of the big retailers and, and actually setting up our company and getting customers and getting that excitement I can kind of relate to those people a lot more um, because we are a small business and we aren't a big consultancy with millions and millions of pounds in turnover yet um but you know so they they are exciting for us that, that they are the high times but then you do get the low times where especially during covid where you're kind of uncertain of what the future might hold and and the unpredictableness i don't think that's a word but of of the environment that you're living in it makes it a lot more difficult as well and like fortunately we were fortunate enough to kind of come out the back of that um, and we're starting to pick up um, and that's when it becomes exciting and I think doing work for our customers as well and kind of seeing the difference that we can make um, they're the highs and they do kind of outweigh the lows in the end but obviously um, you still have to think about those and you still have to live through those low parts as well yeah I, th I think you know reflecting on that journey you're going on you know and we've we've looked at various different things and different routes whether that's like you said learning quickbooks whether that's thinking about marketing whether about thinking all those other things and you know going back to those formal routes you know the the set learning courses you can follow the linkedin courses the webinars people run the you know the online guidance and online support how much have you found that stuff has been helpful in you navigating the challenges you've had to work through um i don't there's been some bits that we found useful online um but if i'm being completely honest especially around the account stuff i find actually just talking to our accountants much more useful because i can ask the questions it is I think when it gets to like kind of topics that are quite in depth, it's difficult to kind of Google the right answer and get really great content. Um, and that kind of highlights the fact that we haven't got really great content out there in a, a number of um, subjects that you probably do need them in in the workplace, you know, um, and that that's kind of probably reflective of how workplace learning is as well, because 
we all always have like those induction bits and your compliance training that's everywhere and that's pretty much the same but you're kind of missing the bits that are role specific and i think that's what we found as well a little bit when we're setting up the company it's like you've got kind of a million and one different answers but which one's the right one um so it is kind of going out and talking to those experts and and getting their advice so like are you talking to our accountants uh, and making sure we're doing it the right way i think that's what i found most helpful during that as opposed to just going on and finding and being overwhelmed by millions of bits of content um and not being able to find that answer easy either you know it hasn't been it hasn't been an easy task and yeah like i said i think it is a reflection of how we learn in the workplace and how things could change and how you could streamline that streamline that a lot as well yeah and i, I think you know i echo that point uh, you know there's millions of bits of content out there you know more than that billions and billions of bits of content out there in the world in all sorts of formats and the ability to find something that's going to answer your question if you're looking at something that's more contextual or more focused is really hard and that's where i think the the personal part of of learning however that's facilitated probably won't ever go away or be replaced by machines maybe it will be at some point but the intelligence of being able to take a raw answer the context understand the challenge you're facing understand the nuances and then apply that you know to me as you said that comes from speaking to your accountant that's comes from speaking to someone who's got some experience in mm -hmm. in an area maybe you're approaching but also that lateral mindset of not just this is what i've done before but this is what i've done and i can think and and transfer the approach i took unpick it and apply that to your situation and maybe give you some guidance support suggestions etc Mm -hmm. but even that's been quite hard to come by yeah yeah no definitely but i think it's it's people as well aren't used to us kind of questioning them either because i think other people don't necessarily do that um so they're kind of given an answer but i think what we like to do is kind of really understand the answer so we can one kind of go away and do it ourselves anyway but it's understanding it in the kind of context of what we're doing it for as well because i hate not knowing why i'm doing something um and it's just feeding me information again like i said previously at the beginning of this it goes in one ear and out the other um so yeah and i think it's, it's not being scared of asking those questions as well and i think lots of people are they're afraid of actually asking the questions to find out the answers because they're they're in fear that they might look stupid or you know but it isn't that is i'm not the expert in account so i need to have uh, those good conversations with the experts to be able to progress my knowledge on that so so thinking more broadly you know we operate in the learning industry we're seeing all sorts of things going on with learning at the moment you know there's potential huge transformation of most industries including learning what are your pet hates about the learning industry or the way that we learn at the moment i think my pet hates are that it's very much kind of people think one size fits all so they might have done something in one industry or one company they leave they go to another and they take literally every bit of information that they did there at their previous company to their new company and they try and implement it there without really understanding what um because you could be in the same industry um you could just swap companies but it doesn't mean that just because you're in the same industry you've got the same objectives you've got the same problems you know what i mean um so you, people don't necessarily understand that they're just trying to move one process that they've done somewhere else and put that into another another company and we see it so often that that, that doesn't work you know what i mean it, different systems different learning methods etc they're all relevant um but you have to understand why you're doing that to begin with um, to ensure that it's actually going to work in the first place. So my other pet hate is um, kind of suppliers and tech suppliers where they've got these systems and the great systems and they've got a need for particular organisations. Um, but again, they're, they're going into organisations like any type of organisation, all types of industries and saying their platform's the one for them. Um, and that's not necessarily the case so we've looked at hundreds of platforms and we know that you've got different types of platforms that suit different kind of 
objectives, different problems, uh, different types of organisations. So I think it's suppliers understanding where their best fit is and where their sweet spots are um, and what type of industries they, they suit and, and what type of problems that they're solving as well. Um, because we often see that the companies buy into the bells and whistles and they are great platforms and they might be great platforms on the case studies but they don't necessarily fit your objectives. So I think those two are kind of linked anyway, because um, it's really understanding what what your business objectives are and it's, it's kind of matching that tech to, to get the right outcome, I guess. So putting a sort of positive spin on it and looking into the future, what would you like from the future of learning? So the future of learning, we've we talked about this previously. I, I thought by now we might have kind of Alexas in the workplace um, and we could just talk to those and they'd tell us the answers, but we're not quite there yet. Um, we see a lot about kind of AI and, and machine learning and bots and et cetera, but they're not quite doing, I think, what what I'm expecting of them to do if I think about the future of learning and like literally just asking to me a question and it can feed you the answer um, because it's learned your businesses, ins and outs, your processes, et cetera. Um, but that's where I'd like to see it, to actually learn in the flow of work. Um, and be able to answer those, uh, ask those questions and get answers really, really quickly. Because um, I think that's going to be most useful when you're in a workplace, because I think lots of people at the moment are still going on to Google and, and Googling stuff. Um, but then having the ability to communicate with those experts as well. So I don't know, have some sort of speaker or things that Alexa like that you can then still communicate with other people, etc. That's what I envisage, but I, I think we're a few years off that yet. Well, we can always hope and I think, you know, yeah. there's a number of things that need to get sorted for that to work. And, you know, yeah. we need to think about knowledge bases also that, you know, maybe to the point we were talking about earlier that not everything is sort of easily findable and digestible yet in in the, in the cloud or online. So, you know, it's also about creating connections to not just content and answers, but also people and opportunities possibly might help that learning to to really become a rich and impactful future experience but you know there's certainly some exciting things ahead yes yeah definitely i, I think uh, my lack of understanding when it comes to the ins and outs of technology um and what you can do and my more simple of approach of this is this would be great wouldn't it go and build it um means that we are probably somewhere off that but yes yeah, I, I think, you know, we both have the approach that if we say it, it can, it is possible. It's just how possible and how quickly, but we will get there one day. So yeah, unfortunately, we haven't got those skills to be able to do that yet, but <laughs> we can learn them, huh? Absolutely. And we can help create that vision for some of the providers or some organisations to help them think about a better future. And we can help guide there. But yeah, neither of us are techies, but hey, we can certainly help with visioning and supporting people on that journey. Most definitely. Katie, it's been great to have a little bit of a chat and sort of explore more what learning means to you. So if the listeners want to find out a bit more about you, you know, speak to you, engage with you in any way, what's the best way of them doing that? Um, so they can contact me via LinkedIn. So um, I'll put my LinkedIn profile in the show notes below. And we've also got links to our company, LinkedIn, as well as Instagram. So yes, uh, we'll put all the links in there so you can get in touch with us. Thank you very much. And thank you to our listeners for listening. Awesome. Thanks, James.